Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and that was some terrible audio. Ugh. Not much is more distracting in an otherwise good video than bad audio. Let's be honest, the industry of film and video is dominated by the visuals. The newest cameras, the most expensive lenses, the coolest monitors. So in our minds, that's sort of the most important thing to making a great video, right? Well, let's try to change that. When you think about a great film or video, what do you think of? Do you think about how crisp the audio quality was in that dialogue scene, or how there was no distracting noise or hum in the background of a shot? No, but it's not because sound isn't as important, but because that great sound typically goes unnoticed to the viewer. It stays in the subconscious, but as soon as you bring it to the conscious, that's when you start hearing words like amateur, low budget, B-movie, student film, you want to avoid people talking about your project like that. And one of the simplest ways to increasing your production value and preventing any cringing faces while watching your video is to get good, clean, crisp audio. So today, I want to go over five tips to help you get better audio. So let's get started. Number one, use a dedicated microphone. This may seem simple to some of you, but there's a lot of people out there who will just use the built-in camera microphone and then wonder later why their audio quality isn't very good. Using an external microphone of almost any quality can help you get better sound. Let me show you the difference between these two options and how big of a difference it can be. All I'm saying is that it just looks like a small glitch to me. All I'm saying is that it just looks like a small glitch to me. A pretty big difference, right? When it comes to recording audio, the microphone is designed to do a very specific job. Some capture sound from all around, others from a very specific direction, and others are designed to be portable and attached to your body. The bottom line is that almost anything is better than your camera's built-in microphone. But if you can't afford to pay for one right up front, I would suggest renting a microphone and seeing the difference for yourself. More likely than not, the experience will convince you that it's worth your investment. Number two, get your microphone as close as possible to your subject. Microphones are tools designed to do a very specific job, capture sound. But even the most expensive microphone needs to be put in the optimal situation to do its best job. And getting your microphone close to your subject is key. The reason you've heard so many jokes about boom mics coming into shots is because filmmakers know what they're doing. They're trying to abide by this rule. And that rule is get as close to your subject as possible without getting the microphone in the shot. But you can cheat with this rule if you find the right situation. For example, a lot of tutorial videos don't worry about breaking the illusion of the fourth wall, so no one minds if you have a microphone right in the shot. Podcasts will do this too, and depending on your production, you just might be able to get away with it. Number three, don't clip. If you remember nothing else from this video, please remember this. If you clip your audio, there's no way to get it back to its optimal quality. It's like it's got a permanent crack in it. What is audio clipping? Remember back to the beginning of the video? Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Ugh, that is clipping. It's when your audio waveform gets distorted after being pushed past its maximum capacity. That's when you start to hear that garbled sound. And this is what it looks like on a monitor. Being pushed right to the boundary of the spectrum and losing its curve and becoming squared off at the top. Normally when you're working with audio in post and it's a little bit too loud, you can just lower it and it'll retain its quality. But when you lower the volume of an audio file that's been clipped, you still get that garbled mess. So how do you avoid it? When you set up your microphone, change the sensitivity to match your situation. This will really help if you have two things, an audio meter and headphones. If you're using a microphone that's plugged into a camera, you should be able to show this audio meter by diving into the settings. If you're using a dedicated external device, this should be pretty standard as a default. Give your subject some examples of things that they're gonna be saying or doing. Ask them to give their lines at the lowest volume they might be delivering, and then at the highest volume they might be going to. Your goal is to watch the audio meter and make sure that it's picking up the very quiet bits and at the same time not clipping at maximum volume. You'll know that it's clipping if your audio meter goes all the way to the edge, and some newer devices will have this area in red. And if you're using headphones, you'll also be able to pick up on this garbled sound. If you're off on either side, too quiet or too loud, simply change your microphone sensitivity accordingly. And make sure every so often to take a listen with your headphones so that when you go to post-production, there's no surprise with how your audio sounds. Number four, location, location, location. Believe it or not, one of the biggest things that impacts the sound that you're getting is the location you're recording at. Having the exact same setup in two different rooms will change the way your audio sounds. Right now, I'm filming with a lavalier microphone. This is what it sounds like in a large room with tile floors and bare walls. And here's a location where there's a lot of soundproofing and carpets. Take a listen to how little echo there is when compared to the last place. Choosing a room that sounds good will dramatically decrease the amount of echo in your audio. When looking for a place with good sound, it's important to remember what will bounce sound and what will absorb it. An easy rule of thumb is to think about what would hurt if I fell on it. Concrete, lots of echo. Tile flooring, lots of echo. Carpets, 
much less echo. If you're still getting echo in your audio though, there's a couple of DIY options to help fix this. In front of any potentially hard sound bouncing surface, try hanging up a piece of fabric, like a blanket. This will help to absorb stray sound and prevent it from bouncing back into your microphone. But just remember, finding a great location up front can help dramatically reduce the amount of work you need to do to get that good sound. And number five, get a dead cat. Probably the most overused joke in film, a dead cat is actually the name of the thing that you put over top of your microphone to prevent wind noise. What I have available to me is called a windscreen. It's a little bit less effective than a dead cat, but it works on the same principle. This is what it sounds like without a windscreen on your microphone. And this is what it sounds like with one on. Now, obviously you're not gonna have wind indoors, but a dead cat can actually help prevent that puffing sound from certain consonant pronunciation. It can actually make a big difference and can prevent you from getting this distracting sound in the middle of your audio. And you know what? That was five, but let's throw in a bonus. Bonus tip, get a room tone. This one might be a little bit less intuitive. No matter how perfect your location is, there's always gonna be some sort of background noise associated with it. So when you're filming on a location, at some point in time, what you wanna do is ask everybody to be silent for 30 seconds and just record the blank noise that's associated with the room. This is called capturing room tone and it lets you do two things. One is that it lets you fill in the gaps between your audio so that there's not this blank space. Here's an example without room tone. This stuff is just like fantastic, great stuff. Thanks. And here's an example with room tone. This stuff is just like fantastic, great stuff. Thanks. But here's the second thing that I can let you do. If you have a background noise that's distracting, but you can't turn it off, like maybe an air conditioner or a refrigerator, then capturing room tone will help you isolate this noise. And assuming that you have access to all of Adobe's Creative Cloud Suite, you can bring it into Adobe Audition. Here you can capture a noise print of your room tone and then apply it to your regular audio clip. The results can be shockingly good. Here's an example before applying. All I'm saying is that it just looks like a small glitch to me. And now after. All I'm saying is that it just looks like a small glitch to me. It's amazing how much each of these individual tips can help your audio quality. So imagine taking them all into account for your next production. I guarantee it'll hugely impact your audio. But guys, that's it. Those are just a few tips to help you get better audio. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.